Love in the Morning Edition, it's back to school for thousands across this country. The Ministry of Education signs a multi-million dollar technology upgrade as a new school year begins. And how are schools faring in our family islands? It's a Monday and the new school year begins. Good morning everyone, I'm LaDawn Davis and this is the Morning Edition. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Well, normally it's described as a traffic nightmare on our streets for many commuters. The streets are also wet this Monday morning. C.S. Gattley is live on our streets this morning. Good morning, C.S. Good morning this morning. It's officially the start of the 2018-2019 academic year and we are on one of the busiest thoroughfares here in New Providence, the Independence Highway. And as you can see behind me, traffic is starting to build up and that we have the able inspector Karan Jennings from the traffic division to tell us all about traffic flow and what these officers are doing to ensure that everyone's commute is safe and smooth this morning. Good morning, Inspector Jennings. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. Good morning, Bahamas. Um, we're here at the Independence Roundabout, and as you can see, it's early, but the traffic is already accumulated in this area, and it is projected to um, get worse as the time goes by. Uh, we have offices in um, most of our uh, highly high traffic areas, which will be this area, Seabreeze Lane, Bailey area. We have the Eastern Road, um, Myla Butler Highway. You also have Glaston Road. Uh, these persons this morning uh, who, was out, who are out right now, they took the initiative to get out their bed early and make their morning an early morning. Um, we, all, we always encourage that. Uh, plan your route, plan your time. Um, also, we're here to assist with traffic management. Also, we are also here to uh, assist with traffic. Uh, so we may help you get to work early, but if you decide that you're going to uh, make an infraction of the traffic laws, we're also here to enforce that as well. So how important traffic accidents and even fatalities. So how important is it for you all to be on the ground and for motorists and pedestrians to see you all on the road and well, it, uh, the weather is down and the streets are wet. These are the times when persons who uh, want to pick up the speed, they're running a little late. We encourage them to stop, uh, be, be precautious and, and be courteous to other road users. Uh, the officers here, like I said, they're here to enforce the traffic laws. Persons want to see officers in the area. So I noticed you all got an early start. We actually um, met up with you all at the traffic division. How important was it for you guys to get out on the road early to your various locations? Uh, the early start was to make an assessment of our areas. Uh, once we make an assessment of our areas, then we know how to handle the high flow of traffic. This isn't nothing new to us. Uh, so uh, once we get out there, we, we, we uh, enforce the law and we, we deal with uh, traffic management to the best of our ability. Now, Inspector Jennings, I know you all have a very busy morning, but are there any areas that we should be looking out for at this present time? Uh, like I say, the high flow traffic areas, uh, every year, same thing. Um, traffic officers would be over there to assist with traffic, so no need to worry. Um, we're there. We're there to assist. All right. Thank you so much. That's Inspector Karan Jennings from the Traffic Division. You heard him. Traffic is building up. If you're not out on the road, I suggest you get out on the road because you just may be late. But even if you are late, make sure that you do so safely because it's better to arrive alive than not at all. Back to you in the studio, LaDawn. Thanks a lot, Siesca. We experience a downpour already and more rain is in the forecast for weather conditions on the outside. Here's Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good morning, Basil. Uh, good morning, LaDawn. We did have some heavy early morning showers, but things will begin to taper off as we get later in today. We'll explain all of that later in the newscast, so do stay tuned. But right now, outside of our studios, we have mostly cloudy skies, temperature at 77 degrees, a relative humidity 88%. Easterly winds at 7 miles per hour, your barometric pressure 1,015.7 millibars, that is 30.01 inches and it is rising.
Temperatures around the islands this morning, 80 degrees in Grand Tulkey. That's in Abaco, Marshall, Abaco at 80. 80 also in uh, Freeport, uh, Grand Bahama. The Berry Islands, 78 degrees. Also Bimini reporting 78. 82 in Harbor Island. Roxani Lutra, 82. Otterstown Canal, and another 82 there. A little cool in Staniel Key at 79 degrees. Here in the capital, as we told you already, 77. 79 in Camp Space on Andrews. Fresh Creek in Central Andrews at 80 degrees. San Salvador and Rum Key at 82. 80 degrees in Crooked Island. Clarence Town, Long Island. Betsy Bay, Maguana. Acklands at 81. Ragged Island, 80 degrees. Matthew Tanya, Niagara, 81. And the Turks and Caicos Islands at 82 degrees. Your body forecast for today for all areas east to south. East winds 15 to 20 knots. Those winds will be gusting near showers and thunderstorms. Tides will be around 4701 in the morning. Low high tide at 131 this afternoon. And that's going to do it for your first look at weather. Stay tuned. Your forecast for today and tonight is still ahead. Thanks a lot, Basil. As we said, it's the start of the new school term and it begins with a vast development in technology. An agreement signed yesterday with the Bahamas Telecommunications Company that will put the educational system on the cutting edge. The accord is being hailed as an historic move that bodes well for this country. Jiminy Swain reports. The five-year contract with the Bahamas Telecommunications Company will install Wi-Fi at all 172 schools across the Bahamas, facilitating over 50,000 students and 4,000 teachers. The Minister of Education, the Honorable Jeffrey Lloyd, noted that education's digital revolution is now underway, bringing about vast changes for education. This installation will ensure that each school is a fully computerized smart school, that it will be fully integrated and will u utilize the latest technology in all schools throughout this country to facilitate distance learning, personalized and individualized learning. This installation will further enable all students who are presently deprived of specialist teachers in math, science and other subjects to benefit from these distant learning modalities in real time and it would also provide students with access to the up-to-date and, uh, and enhanced learning facilities such as the world's libraries materials and methodologies. PTC's Chief Operating Officer Andre Knowles underscored the company's commitment to provide this service. We are indeed pleased that the Ministry of Education has selected BDC as its partner for this meaningful venture. It underscores BDC's commitment to providing equal access to all of our products and services no matter where you live throughout the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. We believe that we are not only supplying access to technology, but we are also providing students with equal access to fundamental tools to thrive in a modern and global society. Julian Anderson Roll, who also played a significant role in the change, compared the impact of the new system to the educational enhancement. We had DSL, which is very slow and obsolete. And we're upgrading now, if you would say, from a Volkswagen to a Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> teachers and students are excited to be on the cutting edge of technology. No longer will we have to wait for downloads and uploads because now we will have the fastest speed that's available to man. And not only will it be in New Providence, it will be throughout um, the Bahama Islands. And as was said earlier, everybody will have equal access through technology. 27 schools will have Wi-Fi this month and the system will be installed in 28 public schools in October, with Family Island schools being implemented simultaneously. Jiminita Swain, ZNS Network News. Like we said earlier this morning, after several months on a summer break, thousands of students across this country will head back to the classrooms to start what education officials predict to be yet another productive year. Now joining us live in studio this morning to tell us more about plans for the new school term is Director of Education, Marcellus Taylor. Good morning, Mr. Taylor. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Mr. Taylor, your response to that major agreement and its impact on education? Well, we, we are very happy that we are now advancing our education sector uh, by using this kind of technology. Um, it'll enable us to do a couple of very important things. One, 
is to try and uh, diminish or eliminate the, dis the disparity in the quality of education from island to island. But also, se uh, secondly, it will enable us to customize the education of each child. Because with the use of technology, we can engage in what we call differentiated learning, which enables in, within one classroom a teacher to service the multiple needs of the students in that classroom. Another thing that the technology also permits is it expands the, uh, the, the, the number of or the amount of resources that are available so that students and teachers can engage in independent learning so that we're not just restricted to the, the few books that might be on a shelf, but now you have all of the information that is available on the World Wide Web. And with that in mind, how ready are public schools for the start of the new year? Oh, we're ready. Um, you know, readiness for schools is, 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 is in part the physical plant, but it's more than the physical plant. It's us ensuring that we have the um, appropriate uh, number and type of teachers in schools. It's also ensuring that the uh, management systems are in place. And it's also ensuring that the students come. So I think from the Department of Education's standpoint, we, we're ready. Um, there might be one or two uh, um, uh, works still going on, but those are largely on the cosmetic side. So nothing, nothing to interfere with schools opening. Okay. And, and speaking of schools, I understand that the Rumkey All Age School was impacted by fire. How would this actually hamper the return for students there? Well, in actuality, um, we think that the school there would be able to start as soon as the teacher is able to get there. Um, uh, of course, you know, Rumkey is one of our very uh, hard to access islands and so because of transportation reasons the teacher is not there right now but as soon as the teacher gets there we'll be able to go. Now this has always been a, a question uh, for the I guess the first day of school. Is there still a shortage of teachers and how is this situation being addressed this time around? Well we have a few deficits. Um, again nothing to stop school from opening. Um, we in the Department of Education have for some years now been utilizing what we call supply teachers largely retired teachers or teachers who have taught in our system before to assist us in areas where we have some needs. But we've also um, conducted an exercise where we've tried to see how we could better use the resources that we do have. And so it's a combination of both that we will try to utilize our teaching resources better and even when we can't make that then engage these uh, supply teachers. And are you able to share with us some of the other initiatives in the educational sector um, this new academic year? Well, I think one initiative that um, will be remiss of me if I didn't mention is the work that we're trying to do with curriculum development. Um, we know that uh, curriculum development has been a bit sporadic over the years. And so what we're trying to do now is to try to ensure that we um, develop curriculum on a cycle so that you know every five years or six years, the curriculum for a particular subject is ref refreshed, revised, and um, updated so that um, uh, it could always be relevant and robust so that our students can get the best quality education. And a quick message to parents this year? Well, parents, uh, what I would like to say is um, let us not forget the wonderful opportunity that our, edu that our education uh, system provides to your children. Let us do our best to make the most out of this and so create an environment in your home that promotes education. Ensure that your students have the, the, the tools that they need coming into school ensure that time is set aside for them to focus on uh, re reviewing and doing homework and be as supportive to the school community as possible. Mr. Taylor, thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Edition. Thank you. Also today, the Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson will continue visits to a number of public schools across New Providence. Over the weekend, Wilson, along with education officials, in inspected some schools and according to the union president, she was generally pleased. I would have visited seven schools in New Providence along with the Deputy Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Education. So we were able to um, visit Thelma Gibson, L.W. Young, Uriah McPhee, C.H. Reeves, Eva Hilton, A.F. Adley, and T.A. Thompson. So as we were moving about together along with my area vice president for New Providence, Vernon Rogers, we were able to discuss some of the concerns that we would have encountered right there on the spot, and we were able to even discuss um, alternative um, measures that may be needed in order for, let's say, a particular school to open and be able to function. So um, thus far, um, we would have covered those schools. 
A standing issue still pending, Wilson is complementing the current working relationship with education. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that the, 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 um, the attitude and the responsiveness that the new permanent secretary has brought to the table and the openness that the minister has built with um, us, that that will trickle down um, to other officers and we will be able to get um, information that is um, very pertinent for the schools and a smooth operation. And that will assist with us not having to have um, so many contentious uh, matters. So, like I always say, if the ministry is willing to work with us, then the union is willing to work with them. Stay close, we've got more news right after this quick break. You're watching The Morning Edition. If you own a portfolio of securities within a brokerage account, like stocks, bonds, or mutual funds, you can access a hassle-free loan, known as a margin loan, based on the value of that portfolio. Your investment portfolio is essentially used as collateral for a cash loan. And the benefits are numerous. Simple and straightforward application, quick turnaround, a more competitive interest rate, no requirement for monthly payments. Contact us for more information on margin loans. We live in a hurricane zone, so safety, security, and protection of our homes and businesses is very important. That's why we buy, you sell. The Hurricane Impact Window and Door Specialists offers 100% fully laminated Hurricane Impact Windows and Doors designed to withstand all category storms. Our prices are 30 to 50% lower than our competitors. We also sell porcelain, mosaic, and plank tiles. Visit our showroom and let our trained, certified staff cater to your needs. We buy, you sell. Located number 163 Robinson Road in the old Hasties building. Call 324-6427 or 698-1141. Don't get blown away this hurricane season. Visit us today. Welcome back to the Morning Edition. School safety is paramount this new school year, and this morning, members of the Royal Bahamas Police Force are out and about promoting safety. Our gym leader Swain is live with police. Good morning. Good morning, LaDawn, and good morning, Bahamas. I'm coming to you live from just outside of the CC Sweeting Senior High School. And, of course, this is a major day. It's back to school, and safety is one of the things that factors greatly into that area. Now, joining me live is ACP Ashton Green. Tell us about I see a number of officers on the streets. Yes, uh, what we have here this morning is all of the, div the divisional commanders out in their respective divisions. Uh, we've been mandated by the Commissioner of Police to ensure that our students get to and from school safely. I want to say to the public, to those of you taking your kids to school this morning, to leave home on time so that your kids can get to school safe. I want to say to you to ask all occupants in your vehicle to wear their seatbelt, and I want you to drive with due care and attention so our kids can reach the school safe to and from. Uh, the officers you see here present this morning, they would be back this afternoon to ensure the safety of our children. Thank you. Well, that's ACP Ashton Green State, but also joining me here is, of course, the press liaison officer, Superintendent Shanton Knowles. And I see that you have officers handing out pamphlets as well. What are the messages that you are, I guess, dis distributing to parents and returning and new students? Well, good morning, Geminita. Like Mr. Green Slade said, uh, officers are on the streets this morning, and my officers from Crime Prevention Office are handing out safety tips. So we have safety tips for motorists, which uh, one of the on those safety tips, uh, one of the, the highlights on that is the speed limit within the school zones, 15 miles per hour between 7.30 a.m. and 9 a.m., and then again between 2.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. So we're reminding motorists to pay attention to the speed limits, especially in that time. But we also have safety pamphlets for kids. 
back to school uh, conflict resolution, uh, safety tips as to how to walk to and from school to avoid accidents. Uh, being uh, victims of crime and hoping that children would get the message, would understand what it is that we're trying to do uh, so that they can focus on school and that kind of thing. Now, speaking to not becoming a victim of crime, I know over the summer break there was some concern um, with specific sexual offenses in this area taking place. Students and obviously persons in this area to be able to feel safe as well. How are you going to address that moving forward? Well, we do have the commander from the Southern Police Station here. His initiative is to go into party number three says to interact with the children but we're definitely going to ask children to be careful walking the streets stay away from bushy areas do not take the track roads but to walk in groups walk in pairs if they are uh, approached by strangers walk away tell an adult uh, look for help but try as far as possible to stay away from areas that they can be harmed or possibly harmed well, Superintendent Chanton knows, as you can see, the police ensuring that students and teachers will head back to the classroom safe today. Back to you in Studio Ladon. Thanks a lot, Jim Anita. Mangrove Key are ready to welcome students to the classroom today. Mangrove Key High School teacher Bettina Knowles says the necessary repairs were made to the campus, including tiling and minor reconstruction. Overall, everyone is anxiously awaiting the start of the new school term. On Friday, we had a prefect and we had an orientation for the 7th graders and 10th graders. So they're up and running and ready and willing to begin the new school term. Each new term, we aim to be bigger and better. It might sound simple, but in its entirety, it means to improve themselves, not only educational-wise, but professionally and intellectually, as well as spiritually as well, being the best person that they can be, even emotionally. Another Mangrove Key High School teacher, Bajina Marshall, is ready to start the new school year with a focus on helping students improve their performance in the national examinations. I have a motto in my classroom. All my students know it. Education is the key. Ignorance is expensive. Be careful of the company you keep. So every year I return to school with the same mindset, but, in, but instead to enhance the student knowledge. And then I look forward to working along with the students this year to make Mangrove Key High School better according to our last our former BJC and BGCSE results. Myself, as a religious studies teacher, we just plan to work harder so we can have better results in regards to religious studies and then I guess every subject within the school. Students will be in the classroom shortly and no doubt with no hair out of place and low cuts eager to make a good first impression at the start of this new academic year. Cleopatra Murphy spoke with several kids and the professionals to find out what the new hair trends are. From skin fades for boys to natural hairstyles for girls, hairstylists in barbers' chairs were filled with young children looking to get the perfect cut or style as they prepared to head back to the classroom. Anthony Carroll and Andrew Charles knew just what they wanted, a cut that is popular among the school-aged. I'm looking for a fade, a nice fade for back to school. Not too high, not too shabby, no. Just a good, clean back to school fade. I'm looking for a low skin fade. I like that it's low. I usually get the high fade, but with a low fade, I get it like twice. Isaiah Paul and Orlando Anderson also had a preference for the style for their own reasons. It does have the size on the side and then not in the back because certain certain haircuts at our school we, we are not allowed to get. So my mom don't spend a lot of money. Well versed in shaping up even the smallest clients, the owner of Tyrone's Barbershop says it is a common request. Well now everybody wants this, this skin fear, this one like, like what I'm doing now, you know. They like this, you know, so I, I believe the parents uh, it serve a little more longer. <laughs> so they coming in for skin fear more more popular, you know, like take off the side and leave the top a little higher and stuff like that. The females are not to be left out. Hairstylist Rosalie Saputi says many students wear natural hair with braids and twists a popular option. Our average time for natural twists is about an hour to hour and a half. Braiding, depending on what all is being done, if it's with extensions, about two hours. No extensions, about an hour to hour and a half. As students prepare to head back to the class, both businesses have seen an increase in clients. Barbara Tyrone anticipates seeing a lot more little heads now that the summer break is over. Cleopatra Murphy, Set NS Network News.
Now, for sure, I want, we want to thank um, Carrie's Uniform Center over there on Mackey Street for, you know, allowing us to be adorned in our, our school uniforms. Uh, I'm representing Harbor Island. I just Berlin. was going to ask yes. you what this uniform is, but I know you're going to go in suspension the first week of school. Too much makeup, shorts, great. And you know they don't like that long but hair. this is how I used to wear it back in the day, and you know. Back in the days, I had a lot of hair then, not this much gray, but I'm still smart like I was back then. So sports is coming up next. That and more <laughs> ahead in sports. Your life is in the moment and on the go. And your credit card? It's right there with you. Turn on mobile location confirmation for your Visa credit card from CIDC First Caribbean and reduce the likelihood of declined transactions when you travel. CIDC First Caribbean. Banking that fits your life. How passionate are you about what you're doing here? Very passionate. I'm, I'm, I'm not being good at a lot of things, but Cooking is one thing that I um, I put my best foot forward every time I step in the kitchen. I do not accept mediocrity. If, it, if it's bad before it goes out to the guests, it's not coming up. I'd rather have a dish come out to the guests late and right than on time and wrong. Good morning, yes, I'm representing the Jolly Green Giants this morning, the school of SJC. Official start of back to school. There are some new coaches in new places all over the country. We'll have that list for you later on in the week as the teachers settle in. Private schools will begin with softball, government, and Grand Bahama will begin with volleyball. But before these students get into gear, Kelsey Johnson has some important advice. While many will like to excel academically, there are others who are hoping to find that balance, academics and athletics. For these student athletes, achieving top average in the classroom and a first place finish in their respective sporting discipline is equally important. But what about the physical aspect? Dr. Cyprian Strawn tells us that being in tip-top shape is key, especially for those student athletes who are constantly training. There are micronutrients that a lot of people are not getting um, and and these contributes this this contributes to greater injuries and poor performances some of the coaches are actually more proactive these days and there are a number of clubs that make sure that their athletes get a physical from during the summer to make sure that when September rolls in these people are already fit uh, check to see what your, your athletes are eating. Check to see if they have little concerns. Are they having headaches every day? Uh, are they sleeping well? Simple thing, do their gums bleed when they brush their teeth? Now that the field is even, with more female athletes stepping to the plate and taking part in sports, Dr. Strawn said coaches should pay extra attention to those who now experience menstruation. You should have it in the back of your mind. This young child now is is, is moving to another level. Puberty is setting in. And so the, the, the change where now they are losing nutrients every month in the form of their monthly cycle, you should have it in the back of, them, uh, in the back of your mind that uh, they're losing something. Is it being replaced properly? And with modern diets, uh, a number of people are straying away from getting red meat. We're trying to be healthy. So we're, we're not eating red meat. We're eating seafood only. Um, a, a coach, a mother, a parent should have it in the back of their minds. My child needs something extra. He also stressed the importance of a healthy meal and vitamin intake, saying that there are a number of telltale signs coaches and parents can look out for. Does your athlete stool every day? Sounds like a simple thing, but there are a number of people who say, no, I go every two or three days. That's a little warning sign. Are they not recovering from their injury, their ankle, their knee, their back? Um, it, it, it may be their diet. Kelsey Johnson, Zet Nest Total Sports. Thanks a lot, Kelsey. Mother Nature batting around the clock on the weekend as New Providence Softball Association had to postpone many of their playoff games. New Providence Softball Association President Desiree Taylor not liking it at all. Some adjustments will have to be made. Well, it is frustrating because we have a target that we want to meet, and with the postponement of games, we're not going to meet that target. So it is a bit frustrating, but we can't help Mother Nature. What is that target? Uh, we want to be done by at least mid 
September, late September, when don't want to play in October. Of two makeup games tonight at the Blue Hills, weather permitting, the Platinum Pool Lady Sharks lead the Johnson Lady Truckers one zip, and in the men's play, the Chances Mighty Mitch will try to even things with the C and S Hitmen at 1 1. And that's going to do it for sports. The QC man, Basel, is back with the weather. More Bahamians are being encouraged to get involved in fishing and farming in an overall view of growing our agriculture industry, putting the Bahamas in a better position to not only feed ourselves, but create a sustainable food chain of produce for export. Hello, I'm Carla Palmer. In the next episode of Agriculture Now, we'll explore the potential of the fisheries sector. Join me on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m. for Agriculture Now. That's Agriculture Now on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m. on the ZNS Television Network. In our final look at weather and representing the Queen's College Comet, we have a very active tropics this morning. There is tropical storm Florence out there in the far eastern Atlantic moving towards the west northwest, and it seems as though this track should keep Florence pretty much away from us. But then we do have a, uh, another system that's very close to us. As a matter of fact, it's tropical depression number seven formed just to the uh, west of Andros, and that is moving toward the west. We had some heavy rain showers as a result of that system, but the good news is things will be clear up as it continues to move towards the west but there's some intensification anticipated as it gets into the gulf of mexico and uh, satellite pictures are showing florence are uh, looking pretty impressive out there but as we already told you that should stay clear of us and then we have another strong tropical wave out near the lesser antilles that we will continue to watch as that moves towards the west as well our forecast for today is calling for partly cloudy conditions with some residual showers this morning, but things will improve in the afternoon. 89 degrees for your high temperature, and tonight we are looking at uh, mostly cloudy to overcast, temperature around 78 degrees, and your extended weather forecast, uh, temperatures not too bad, keeping you just slightly below the 90 degree mark during the daytime, and those nighttime temperatures holding in the uh, mid-70s. Showers once again waking their way back into the forecast around uh, Wednesday and Thursday of this week. So there you have it, your seven-day forecast, and as we already told you, things will be improving as that tropical depression number seven continues to trek towards the west. And so since everybody said they're you representing, nice I'm representing Harbor Island. I'm representing the big jolly green and, and, giants. And, and Basil? Queen's College Comet, the greatest. See, I still there with Queen's College Queen's as well. Queen's College as well. Oh, Queen's College are dominating this morning. And that does it for the morning edition. Thank you so much for waking up with us once again. I'm LaDawn Davis. See you right back here tomorrow morning.